Hello, and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with Computer Music. This month, we'll be exploring the Zebra CM to create a glassy pad which is quite ethereal in nature. This is a really lovely texture for using in more ambient and EDM based styles of music and production, and it has the added bonus of being particularly high in terms of its frequency content. Consequently, it should mix really nicely into a track. So let's begin by loading up an instance of the Zebra CM in your favoured door. And the first thing we'll do is an initialize. And we do this by going to the window, which is at the top of the Zebra plugin, click and come down to where it says init for initialize at the bottom. Just a little reminder that any time we change a value of a pot on the plugin itself, you'll see that value displayed in this upper display. So before we start making our sound, we're going to turn the master volume down to a value of 30. The reason for this is that the plugin defaults to its maximum volume setting, and this is going to be a relatively loud sound. So safeguard your speakers and your headphones and your ears by turning the volume down immediately. Then we can get stuck in with creating the sound, and we begin with oscillator number one. We're going to change the waveform to a value of 11, as indicated in the upper display. So click and hold on the sawtooth icon that we currently have available here, and drag the mouse upwards until you reach a value of 11.00. As you can see on screen, this is a relatively complicated waveform, and it sounds like this. It's quite reedy in nature. We have some other adjustments to make while we're here. First of all, the volume control. We're going to drag that down to a volume of 45. Then the panning control. We're going to adjust that so that it's minus 30 towards the left-hand side. We're also going to thicken the texture of oscillator 1 by adding some aliasing, and we do this by clicking on the number 4 in the aliasing section, and then to spread out the waveforms, which currently sound like this, we're going to detune them to a value of plus 6. Oscillator 1 should now sound like this, much thicker. Next we're going to move over to oscillator number 2, where we're going to make some very similar changes and alterations. We'll begin by changing the waveform, so click and hold on the waveform display and drag it up to a value of 3.40. We also need to turn the volume up on oscillator 2, and we're going to set this at a value of 74. We're also going to pan oscillator 2 to the right-hand side with a value of 30, and that should mirror oscillator number 1. We can also turn on the aliasing by clicking on the figure 4 in the aliasing section, and we're going to adjust the detune by setting that to a value of minus 3. We should now have a sound like this. Right next door to oscillator number 2 is a noise section, and we're going to adjust this so that we introduce some white noise into our sound. The white noise is indicated by this icon here, which is at the top left-hand side of these four icons. We need to turn the volume up, and we're going to turn it up to a value of 37. And then we can adjust the high-pass and the low-pass filter elements of the white noise itself. Now white noise can be very overbearing, and we don't want a whole lot of it, so what we're going to do is adjust the low pass filtering to a value of 72, and then adjust the high pass filtering to a value of 74. This will then give us a sound like this. Next, it's time to move to the filter section, where we're going to use a slightly different filter this time. It's a bandpass filter. We're going to select the bandpass filter, which is called ResBand. Once selected, we can change the cutoff pot to a value of 95. And to induce a little bit of resonance into play, we're going to set the resonance pot to a value of 6. We're going to create a little bit of filter-based undulation in this sound, and we can do this by sending one of the LFOs in the direction of the filter cutoff. To achieve this, go to the user assigned pot, which is currently assigned to envelope 2. Click in this drop-down menu and select LFO2. We then have to set an amount, so we're going to set this to a value of 3. Next, we're going to go to the envelope section, and we're going to make some alterations to envelope 1. Envelope 2 isn't actually being used in this patch, but Envelope 1 is being used to control the amplitude or the volume of the sound. Change the attack pot to a value of 72. Set the decay pot to a value of 57. Set the sustain pot to a value of 68. And finally, set the release pot to a value of 47. You'll notice that both the attack and the release phases are relatively generous, and that's because we want a very slow attack and we want to have a little bit of decay on the back end as we release each key. 
Finally, we need to revisit the LFO segment of our patch, and we move to the LFO section, ensuring that we're looking at LFO2 by clicking on this 2, which should then become displayed in turquoise. What we want to achieve here is a very subtle amount of undulation heading towards the filter. The modulation itself was set in a previous step, but we're dictating the actual rate of modulation, and we think something really slow, like a 1 over 1, which basically means that a cycle will happen over a period of a bar. This should give us a sound like this. That concludes the actual synth patch itself, but it's quite important to add some additional elements, which you can either do on the plugin, or you might find it more flexible to handle within the door. We've got three plugins that we're using here. First of all, we're using a compressor to just keep the general pad levels under control. We've then got a delay, which is being achieved by this Echo Boy from Sound Toys, which is feeding into a really bright and long reverb, which is being created by this Eventide reverb. The result is something very sweet sounding indeed. So that's our patch for this month. We'll see you next time.